Hey everyone, this is Chris, and you're listening to Last Watching One Cross Radio, and today we are joined by nobody. It's just me. Um, so yeah, we're doing a solo episode today. Um, eventually, I'd love to do this topic with somebody, um, but all the people I know who enjoy Power Rangers in a similar level or more than I do are all online and difficult to arrange a schedule with. Uh, so today we are going to talk about Power Rangers. Because it's super fun to talk about, and super fun to watch, and read. Uh, it's, what a time to be a Power Rangers fan. <laughs> uh, so, basically why I wanted to talk about this was twofold. Uh, but before I get into that, um, if you haven't checked out the new trailer for Toy Story 4, it is really good. Uh, it's very different than I thought it would be, and thankfully it's much better than the teaser trailer that dropped a couple months back. So go check that out. Um, but yeah, the reasons I wanted to talk about Power Rangers is again twofold. One, recently I've seen, and I shared on Instagram, that one of the most continuously visited posts on the 2099 One Cross Street site is the post I did about a year and some change ago, uh, going on two years ago, was, um the one I did about Power Rangers RPM, because that show be awesome. Uh, and it was really cool to see, like, oh, hey, there's, like, this one's continuously getting hit multiple times a week. Uh, it's not just our newer posts. People are hitting up older content, which is great and encouraging. Uh, at some point, I will start writing again for the website. It's just, with the new schedule, it's difficult. The podcasts are easy to, to pound out, uh, I find because you can just the the talking and editing is easy when when it's written that that takes a little bit more time. So I might experiment with doing like video episodes uh, that aren't podcasts, and I'll release those instead. But I, I do enjoy writing, so it's there's a catch twenty two here, and I, I do want to get back to it. Um, the other reason is because there's been a couple things online recently where. Uh, Hasbro purchased Power Rangers last year, and the first show under Hasbro's deal is Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Beast Morphers, which drops pretty soon, if it hasn't already, uh, by the time I posted this. Um, and with that, there's, with renewed interest in the br brand as Hasbro's been releasing some toys that has gotten a lot of excitement from the fandom and is expanding a bit beyond it. Uh, and with the new show and renewed interest, it's almost, uh, there's, there's been more talk of a new Power Rangers movie. So I kind of wanted to talk about that as well. Um, so that's why we're doing this. So with the, uh, with Power Rangers, like I, I've only grown to enjoy it more in adulthood, which is borderline odd to say, but uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Like that's the thing. A couple of years ago, I revisited it out of nostalgia because it's it's a fun watch. It's fun to revisit stuff you enjoyed as a kid. And at times, there's stuff you can kind of take away from as an adult. Like Beast Wars is a show that I love to watch now. Which as a kid, you're like, oh, cool dinosaurs that turn into robots and fight wasps that turn into robots. It it's odd, but it's fun. Uh, and there's fart jokes, which you can enjoy as a kid, that do not hold up as an adult. I, I just don't care for fart jokes anymore. But that show you can watch as an adult and enjoy like some of the heavier stuff. Themes of honor, themes of doing right and wrong, uh, whether or not you should preemptively destroy something. It, it's got some heavy themes for what was a kid's show. Power Rangers, though it doesn't go as heavy, it does deal with some some heavier themes, especially right and wrong. Um, the in space covered like the monster was not a bad person inherently, but it had to do bad things. So it it through the guise of a, this spandex wearing multi colored kid show, it, it it explores some stuff. I don't watch Power Rangers for that so much, although there are rich themes, especially in RPM, which is one of my favorite series. Uh, it's up there. It's it's probably my second favorite. Um, 
But a couple of years ago, I started revisiting Power Rangers for nostalgia. And then back in 2017, uh, when I was realizing um, that there was more to what was going on than just like, oh, I'm kind of nervous. Like when I was realizing I had some deep anxiety, um, which later diagnosed as mild anxiety, just it can mess with you big time. Uh, part of the recommendations was find something that is a good distraction. So Netflix being awesome at that time, let you download episodes that you can watch without using your data. So you're not streaming while you're on the bus. And as I was starting to work at uh, Marshall's in Burlington, it was like an hour uh, to an hour and a half transit trip on the bus from Hamilton up, up into Burlington. I started downloading shows and then I just started revisiting Power Rangers and it really helped with the anxiety. It's that first, that first season and the first couple seasons of Mighty Morphin um, are really fun. Like they're, they're objectively terrible, but in the right kind of way, because it's very much a kid's show. It's whoosh when a punch is thrown and people backflipping unnecessarily. Uh, but it's it's the right kind of cheesy. Uh, some people just can't get into it, so I can, I can understand that. But I, I wouldn't call it terrible, but if someone's like, man, there's nothing in this, I, I can kind of see why. I just disagree. That's why I'm saying objectionally uh, terrible. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's awesome. Uh, and then as I got more into it, I, I actually started watching more and revisiting seasons that I hadn't watched as a kid. As a kid, I got um, I watched through Mighty Morphin, the whole, the whole three seasons. I watched through Zeo. I got like four episodes into Turbo, and I'm like, I'm done. Partially because I was, at that point, like Power Rangers wasn't cool as a kid, and then also partially because Turbo is rough. Turbo is like, out of the first four series, Turbo is like my least favorite. Um, and then you missed in space entirely, which sucks because I've watched it now and it's awesome. Uh, and then I found it helpful with the anxiety, but then also I'm into stuff that you can really sink your teeth into. And the fun thing with Power Rangers is it has a lot of stuff, that, especially now, that you can really, as a fan, sink your teeth into. Uh, it's got a lot of history behind it. So for those who don't know, it's like a, the least well-kept secret for anybody who searches, and they're not even trying to hide it. Uh, Power Rangers is adapted from a crazy long-running uh, Japanese franchise called Super Sentai. And the way it works is each there's a season of like 50 episodes, and then they get a movie, and then it moves on to the next season, Unconnected. And then they eventually cross over with the previous team in the in the movie. Power Rangers for the first three seasons broke that trend. Um, the first season of Mighty Morphin used all the Zoo Ranger footage, which was the footage that had the the Dragon Zord, like the Dragon Zord, the Dino Zords, the Dino costumes, and all that. Um, and it was very very different. And when you watch the show, you can tell what was shot in America. And like with the suits and what was just redubbed Japanese footage, especially with the Green Ranger. With the Green Ranger, uh, the shield did not get uh, the prop, I think, got destroyed in transit. So you can see what's this great looking shield prop in the Japanese footage and what's this loose, loose, I want to say felt, but it's not felt, but this loose stitched together shield that doesn't look like it could help you with anything um in the american footage so it's 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 fun and it's fun to look at from a technical standpoint um just because it, it gets interesting as the show goes on in the second season they they got toho not toho sorry um tohi i believe to refill uh, film new footage uh called the zoo 2 footage uh so they could use more more battles and all that because they burned through so much of the footage from Zoo Ranger that they needed new footage. And what they did was they wanted to expand the market with toys, 
but also but not change it too much because it's like if we do the the hard change then no like we're we're gonna lose the kids our our huge audience they didn't expect power rangers to be the huge success that it was like no one expected it to take off like it did but it was massive as a kid it was massive um so they they got new footage done uh, while at the same time, in the second season, if you're if you if you remember from a kid, they got new Zords and new powers, kind of, but they they kept the old suits, and that was the the Thunder Zords with the with the Thunder Megazord, which was gangster. It was awesome. Uh, but partway through that series, they switched to having um having Tommy be the White Ranger. And this is where stuff gets interesting from a technical standpoint, because they're adapt they're using Zoo 2 footage for some of the close-up shots for the Megazord and Monster battles. They're using monsters from the Zoo 2 footage and monsters from Die Ranger, which was the Sentai that they got the Zords and the White Ranger from. And they're splicing it all together. And at points you can tell, at points it's it's really technically well done. Um, especially the last episode with the, the Zach, Trini, and Jason, the original red, black, and yellow rangers, uh, which is a whole other thing. Uh, an accidental casting that will never, ever happen again. Um, where you had the black, the, the black guy playing the black ranger, the Asian girl playing the yellow ranger, and... The uh, well, Austin St. John at one point was rumored to be partially native. I don't believe he is, I, I think that's been refuted, but still, uh, that guy playing the the Red Ranger. And at points, people try to be like, You had a white guy playing the White Ranger, but he was the Green Ranger first, so it, it doesn't count. Um, but their last episode, they weren't even present for, so they they had had issues with how much they were getting paid. It later turned out that. Even though Power Rangers was, was the huge success it was, the actors were getting paid roughly minimum wage at that time. Like Austin St. John, who was playing the Red Ranger, was like, I probably could have gotten paid equal or more working at McDonald's for less hours because it was like 18-hour days. So there was some pay issues. They tried to renegotiate the contract. Tommy came in and became the huge fan favorite. So a lot of stuff was going to him. So their characters were getting less developed. And for the next couple of years, um, even though Jason David Frank did a good job and he's become much, much cooler dude than I've heard he was at the time. At the time I heard he had a real ego and earlier in the 2000s, you could hear stuff where it was debatably ego driven. I'm not trying to talk bad about the guy. He seems like a super nice guy. Um, especially now. And hey, he liked a post I made on Instagram and that that floored me. That made my day. So that was awesome. Uh, but he came in, was the driving force of the show for a number of years. It was the tall, Tommy Oliver show, guest starring the Power Rangers. Um, so Austin St. John, Trini Quang, who unfortunately uh, passed and... Walter Jones. Wow, that was worth it. <laughs> Sorry, Walt. Um, I'm talking like I know him on a first name basis. I don't. Never met him. He seems like a really good guy, too. That's the thing. A lot of these casts, a lot of the Rangers are really good people. Um, so back to the story. They left. Uh, they gave notice. And then their final episode, they weren't even present for filming. So that one's cra that two party is crazy interesting to watch because it's overdub lines using old lines, using old footage. Um, at points they're filming around, uh, a joke constantly in the fandom is the Rangers always wear clothes with the color of what Ranger they are. So Tommy at points, even though he's now the white Ranger is wearing green clothes because they're using footage of them together when he's in green clothes while he's the white Ranger. And then other times it's what's clearly overdubbed stuff. So it's, it's kind of interesting um it's fun to watch as a fan just to have a blast at the backflips and the ridiculousness the right kind of ridiculousness but then other times on the technical side because you're using footage from a different country adapting it to a different country that has different standards different stuff that's acceptable different stuff that's common jokes and all that um man i've really got sidetracked 
So Rangers is a lot of fun. And then, then they, the third season is where they did a soft change where they started adding the Ninjetti costumes, which was something that was in the first movie. That's a lot of fun, but completely disconnected from, from the show. And uh, that, that movie's getting a Blu-ray release, which I may or may not buy because it's a very fun movie. Um, so we go from there to the, again, the technical interesting stuff. Cause now at this point they are, they have the, the costumes. They're not using the, the zoo ranger footage anymore. There's no zoo, the zoo three footage, but now they've moved into, I can't remember the name of the Sentai. I think it, but it worked out to Ninja Ranger, I think, um, where they're using loose costumes. They're using two sets of Zords from that series. And in the third season, they get the Ninja Zords with the Ninja Megazord, which was, again, awesome. Uh, and then there was the Shogun Me Megazord. But in that Sentai, the Shogun Megazord came first, and then the other Zords came second. So there was a mix match. Um, they're adapting that footage. They're creating their own footage with Lord Zed, who was strictly an American uh, villain who was gangster and awesome. Lord Zed was just wonderful. Um so it's, again, interesting on the technical side. Uh, and then they got to a point where they're like, okay, you know what? We're, we're going to try something new. It's getting too expensive to do all this mishmashing with, with footage and all that as we're adapting this footage, but still keeping the suits. So they did the first hard, uh, borderline hard reboot of Power Rangers, which it, it's not a hard reboot in terms of we're ignoring all the story and everything. It was... We're changing the aesthetic. We're changing the... It's the first time the Rangers are getting new costumes. It's the first time there's... It's not the first time, but new Zords, new costumes. We're going all out on that. But we're still keeping the core cast. So you got Zeo, which Zeo was really fun. Uh, still very much the Tommy Oliver show, but I still remember as a kid, my mind being blown as a fan when Jason came back as the gold Ranger and that was the gold Ranger is awesome. He's up there with one of my favorite Rangers. He looks like a, a tank just because of how awesome his chest plate shield is. And it's Jason and he shows up and he's wiping out everybody. And he's one of the few sixth Rangers who didn't get like that gangster introduction where he walks through everybody and then he gradually gets depowered. Um, Gold Ranger, like, relatively could still waste everybody the whole way through. And then as he started getting weaker, they tied it into the story where, hey, these are designed for, these powers are designed for someone who's not a human being. Your body is rejecting them. Like, and again, we're getting into the interesting story where it's stuff you can actually catch as an adult that as a kid, you're like, oh, what? And as an adult, you're like, huh, that's that's interesting. I'd, I'd, I'd like that more. Um, so Zio was, was really fun. Then you got the second movie, Turbo, which was tied into the show. And Turbo is not a good movie. Um, from a fan perspective, they never explained why they had to update to the to the Turbo powers. Because the idea with the Zio powers was they will continually get stronger. There is, like, no cap on this. And it's something that uh, Linkara and his excellent history of Power Rangers series, which you can and should look up on YouTube, uh, explains where it's like, you see, you track Zeo from when they get their powers at the beginning to when they get them at the end. It works. It's a continually growing thing. Um, the, the Rangers get stronger. In the movie, I think there was a line where it's like, hey, you need these turbo powers to get into this dimension. But it makes no sense why you'd actually why they got rid of the the Zeo powers. The Turbo show was not that good. Um, now, I've heard it got better, so I've, at some point I'll try to watch the second half because the movie and the show ignored a lot of how the second uh, how Zeo ended. Zeo ended with Jason going off, getting a new girlfriend. Um, the Machine Empire defeated. Rita and Zed are like, we're back. We're gonna we're gonna fight them. And Bulk and Skull are off to France to be detectives. Because Bulk and Skull were awesome. And then 
then the movie came out where Bulk and Skull weren't in, but Jason and suddenly Kimberly are back, which was cool to see as a fan. But at the same point, it's like, that, that, what? How much longer does this take place after? It's the new villain Diva Talks because they're adapting a they're adapting Car Ranger. Um, and Zia was O Ranger. I just don't remember the the Sentai for uh season three i th i think it's ninja ranger but anyway um so it ignores all the developments like it's just in the movie there's a line of diva talks being like hey rita what do i do with these and it's like run and lord zed's just snoring and that's all you see of them in in turbo till the finale um so turbo was weird because even as a kid at that point you're like wait what uh and now and now as an adult or someone older you're like wait what like were you not paying attention to the show you wrote? Um, so <clears throat> Turbo was what it was. And then at that point, Jason David Frank, at, who he'd been playing Tommy since Mighty Morphin season one. The only He's the only one from the original cast because the guy who played Billy um, left in the – David Yost left during Zio uh, for terrible reasons because he – he was bullied about. He was bullied for being a homosexual. The '90s were less accepting times. Um, yeah, no, they they. It, when you hear his stories, it's like the treatment he got on set is awful. Um, people should not be bullied for that. I digress. Um, so, Tommy, uh, Jason, David, Frank saying he wants to go. Um, Catherine, it's dang it, what's her name? Uh, Catherine Sutherland, who played Catherine on the show, she wanted to leave as well because she had been in since Mighty Morphin season three. And it's like, hey, it's, it's time to move on. Uh, so they kept the season with them going forward. They added a Kid Ranger, which was something that had existed in Sentai, but nobody wanted. Um, but it's again interesting because at the time they started adapting another Sentai show and it was Big Bad Beetleborgs where it was kids turning into adults when they, they did the thing. And that was a huge success. So Power Rangers, which was losing, starting to lose momentum and ratings to uh, Big Bad Beetleborgs wanted to do the kid, which ended up like the guy who played the kid was all right. It's just nobody wanted a kid ranger. Um, and the guy who played Rocky... Uh, Steve Cardenas, nice guy. Um, he he ended up wanting to leave because he had to move, so he was written out in the movie. Um, but you had Johnny Young Bosch, um, and the others still sticking around. I'm sorry, I just I can't remember the whole cast, and it's not like they'll ever see this. But you guys have have all been super nice. I see how you interact with fans on Instagram. You're wonderful people. Um, <laughs> Very interactive with the fan community. So they uh, they were essentially given the boot, everyone. And in the mid-season, you got the cast change. And that's when the show got to focus. I'm going to speed up. And the nice thing is I haven't seen all the shows after, so I can't do a season-by-season -season play. But Turbo, uh, you got Turbo, and then you got In Space, which was wonderful. Uh, In Space was great. It was everything that Turbo wasn't. It was it was fun. And the last bits of Turbo, especially the season, ended on such a downer, which was cool. Uh, in Space was great. The cast, again, uniform change, but cast that was there for the from the second half of Turbo onwards, except for An Justin left and the guy who played Andros came in and then the new Sixth Ranger and all that. So then... At that point, they thought In Space was going to be the final Power Ranger season, so they were like, screw it, we're going all out. Except then In Space was such a success, such a success they got to they ended up inevitably continuing it. So then you got Lost Galaxy. And what happens here is when they start doing the Sentai thing of each new season is a new cast, new powers, new everything. Uh Eventually, so that that went on for a long time. There's some good seasons there. Tommy, the guy, Jason David Frank came back for Dino Thunder, um, and on and on and on I go. The show recently had its 25th anniversary season, which the episode wasn't everything I wanted it to be, but it I it, 
just different expectations. Uh, but it was still a fun watch and very nostalgic and cool. Um, RPM, I got to talk about. It is excellent. RPM is something that is a good sci-fi show. Yes, it's a kid's show, but it deals with heavy themes. Like, it's... Again, it was the last show of the Disney era of the show. And it was going, they just said, all right, whatever, go all out. And even th there was some behind the scenes tumult that uh, caused some issues where plans changed later. Uh, but it's like, it's an, an apocalyptic setting. People die in this show. It's not like they're teleported and they come back. No, with the exception of uh, one time of that happening, People die in in RPM. Uh, like millions of people have died. They don't try to hide it. They don't glorify it, but they don't try to hide it. Dr. K, the mentor, the Zordon of the show, has a tragic backstory that they don't hesitate in exploring. Every ranger is shown to like have some kind of messed up past. It deals with bullying. It deals with entitlement. It deals with like trying to do good thing, uh, the right thing in a post-apocalyptic setting. Uh, the character of Ziggy is very, very funny, but he he was a good guy who, who ended up having to do bad things and then make decisions that would mess up his life for forever, but to do the right thing. Oh, man, RPM is so good. And what's interesting with that one is it's adapted from a very light-hearted... Um, Sent, the Sentai was called Go Onger, and it was very lighthearted. And the show also tied in like meta humor. They addressed tropes from that season in particular, but also like Power Rangers as a whole. So it's it's a very fun season. It's one of my favorites. Um, and the show's still going. I might check out Beast Morphers. I haven't been able to watch a full. There's only a couple of seasons that I've been able to get through fully. Because uh, even though it's fun to watch and all that, it at times it, it's just the disconnect. It's like, okay, this is a little too cheesy for me. But I appreciate it. And that's where I really, really dig the comics. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comics. And I talked about another time, the Soul of the Dragon one. Uh, it has been excellent because... It updates Power Rangers in a way where it's still got the fun cheesiness, but you can do more gravity, you can do more serious stuff, and still and it embraces all facets, everything Power Rangers, where it, especially the Shattered Grid event where every team showed up. So you got to enjoy them in that medium. If that team or the current team doing it, although I haven't read past this the big Shattered Grid event. If that team was to do a cut like a mini series based on every Ranger team, I would, I would read it. Like that's the, even Operation Overdrive, which is terrible. Operation Overdrive is like the worst season of Power Rangers. I would actually read that if that team was doing it because they the they know these characters, they know what makes them tick, but they also know how to make them a little more serious while still having the cheesiness. Um, They've also started slow. They've also started embracing and incorporating stuff from the Sentai. Uh, one of the later issues showed a team. I think it was Jetman that existed in the Sentai that has never been in any Power Rangers media, and they were like, "This was a team of Rangers that were killed." So it's cool that they can do that. Um, Mega Force or Super Mega Force, which was a really dumb name. Uh, and a terrible season. They got really lazy with their editing. Now we're back to the technical stuff. Because uh, Mega Super Mega Force was from the it was the 20th anniversary season. It was based on the 40 and incorporating from the 40th anniversary season of the Sentai. And at points they were like very specific where we're gonna edit the footage so then everybody can look like this from the season, even though that footage wasn't available from the Sentai. And then they got lazy and they included uh, Sentai teams, which hadn't been there, which I've tried to watch some of the Sentais and I want to watch again. It's just a very different show and it's difficult to get through. 
but it's not because it's bad. It's just very, 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 very different. Um, so I do want to give Die Ranger another shot, and I love the costumes from Die Ranger, but it made no sense why they were in uh, Mega Force or Super Mega Force. Um, man, the shows have gotten much better than Super Mega Force. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to talk about Power Rangers because it's fun. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. Uh, I do recommend highly if you're reading comics, uh, if you want to, uh, but you don't want to watch the show, check out Boom Studios, uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comics. They've done a couple mini series, uh, like Soul of the Dragon was its own graphic novel. They did Power Rangers Pink, which was a really fun read. Um, they also had, like, the way the volume started, it was essentially like, Power Rangers year two. At that point, Tommy had been on the team. It was after uh, he had joined the team and uh, left Rita. And it deals so much with the themes of isolation, loneliness, like someone being new to the team, feeling like an outsider and also feeling like, can I trust my judgment? I've been brainwashed. Am I going to be brainwashed again? So good. Um, and then they've done Go Go Power, uh, the new series, Go Go Power Rangers which has been out for a year and some change now. Uh, I haven't read, but I've heard really good things, and that's like Power Rangers year one. Uh, oh, so the last thing I did want to talk about was what I'd like out of the new movie. So there was a recent live-action movie that I was I was all right with. Now, with that one, when I first saw it, I was like, yeah, this was cool. But then as time's gone on, I've liked it less. Uh, I hated what they did with the the Zords. The Zords looked awful. Mastodon had six legs. What? Has anybody actually... Anybody designing that ever see what we think a Mastodon looks like? There's no fossil evidence those things had six legs. That was stupid. Um, the cast was really good. Um, the guy from Stranger Things Season 2, the bully character, who was really funny, uh, he played Jason in the movie. He was really good. The kid who played Billy, uh, who I believe was autistic or on the spectrum, he did excellent. He stole the show. The girl who's playing Princess Jasmine was the Pink Ranger. She was good. Uh, you had a really good cast. I didn't like the design of Alpha. Um, Billy, uh, I almost said Bill Cranston. Brian Cranston. There we go. I knew it started with a B. And he was actually involved in the original Power Rangers, and that's why Billy was named Cranston. Uh, Brian Cranston was great as Ordon, and it was really cool. And Rita was different, at, but played wonderfully. She was she was fun. Um, Elizabeth Banks played Rita. She was fun. They started out with references to a lot of Power Rangers lore, like the Zeo Crystal and all that. I didn't care for the design of the suits. I didn't care for how... Uh, the thing is, with that movie, if you're going... Like, bank on the nostalgia. They didn't use the theme song from the show. They used it from the 95 movie, which was fun. Maybe it was a rights issue, but it would like lean into it more. Um, and I would have loved a tone similar to what they've gotten in the comics, where it's serious, but also cheesy. Um... So there's discussion of if the new movie is going to be a sequel or a full-on reboot. Um, with no offense to the cast, because the cast was good. That way they're doing the characters are interesting. Uh, and I know for a lot of people it's like, representation! And that's, that's good. I'm not saying that's bad. Um, I don't know if I want a sequel. Um, just because I... It's uh, it wasn't the success success it should be, and I also want completely redesigned Zords. Uh, the only th the cast was good. I'd, I'd maybe carry them over, but I want something closer, some bit closer to the characters that were from the show and in the comics, because the comics channel the characters from the show. They just expand and grow, so it's not like hey, their trait is they're just like goody goodies, and that's their only trait. Like they're perfect at everything. And they're wonderful human beings. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's their only trait. Um, like, I'd like to see something like uh, Boom Studios comics. 
So I, I'm hoping for a soft reboot. Again, no offense to the cast. They were great. They played their characters really well. And if if you can do it where there's that representation and it's organic and that's like it's part of the story and not the only story, um, then, then I'm down for it. An example of what I'm talking about is uh, before Solo and I dug Solo, it was like, hey, Lando's pansexual. There's not really anything in the movie that hints at that outside of like, Debatably, the he loved his droid, but it they didn't go into it too much. So that I don't I don't find as good representation because it's just like oh hey he's this and it's like brownie points, but there's not that there. There it's not written into the character, and they didn't expand upon it much. Like they did something where it's like okay I can kind of see it. And I can, I could, I could kind of believe it, but if it's done organically into the character, then it's better. So I'd let, yeah, I'm hoping it's, uh, it's just a reboot. Like they tried, it wasn't what it should have been. Also, the Megazord in the movie didn't look good. In the last movie, didn't look good, and the Goldar didn't look good. Uh, and the putties were weird. I'm not asking for guys in gray suits going like, but still something. Um, yeah, so I'm going to end it there. If you got through this episode, thank you. Uh, I do, again, highly recommend check out Boom Studios comics. They've been excellent. Great read. One of my favorite ongoing titles in comics right now. Um, I'd also really recommend just revisit the show. It's fun. Uh, if you want like fun cheesiness, but with a bit more meaty context, then definitely, definitely watch RPM. It is one of the best Power Ranger shows and a great sci-fi show in its own right. All right. All that being said, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Um, and last thing I'll recommend, check out, uh, if you haven't before, check out Linkara's History of Power Rangers show. You can find it on the Atop the Fourth Wall website, or if you just search it on YouTube, there are several playlists uh, with them on. So check them out. They're a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. Take care and God bless. Peace.